<laughs> okay. Hey everybody, it's um, Melissa Bourbon, also known as Winnie Archer, and I am here today with a very special, awesome person, Terry, also known as the Vineyard Baker on Instagram. Hey, Terry. Hi. Hi, Winnie, Melissa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> today, I guess today I'm Winnie. You're Winnie today. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So um, I just want to start by saying, so we're getting together and having this chat because Vineyard Baker's Instagram feed completely inspired the bread, the focaccia from uh, that I used in this book. So every bread shop book features kind of a couple of different recipes and there tends to be a central bread. And your Van Doe focaccia just caught my eye and I was just enthralled with it. And then I reached out to you and asked if we could use a picture of it, you know, on the cover and then the recipe you said we could put in the back of the book. So it is. And you've been so gracious and generous. So I thought we should chat. So hello. Hi. Oh, it's really good to finally talk to you. I know we've gone back and forth through uh, instant message there, but <laughs> yeah. So I, so I just want to jump right into the foca the Vando focaccia. So how did that come about? I mean, I just think it's so amazing. Oh, thanks. Um, you know, the, uh, the, the one place that I can actually pinpoint that it kind of became um, a popular thought, I, I had done it early on, early before this one moment, but I did not... Um, I don't know, I did, it didn't promote in my brain. But I was teaching classes for adults, just uh, bread baking classes, just mm -hmm. for fun, you know, at, at night at our adult education center. And we happened to be, um, I was doing a six week course on uh, international breads. Mm -hmm. And we were going into the Italian breads and I thought, I'll, I'll do focaccia. And it was February, so I said, I'm gonna actually do <laughs> the focaccia bread art with them where I set up a table of different types of vegetables and I actually let them cut up whatever they wanted and shapes that they wanted and uh, they we shaped our dough like hearts and mm -hmm. created it with most people did flowers which was perfect so that kind of springboarded it. and they they were so in love with that pro that whole project and I mean so enthusiastic I've never seen a group so uh, like wildly creative they were just talking and working it was so great and to see and then it kind of just took off from there and every time i would promote the class and for the next uh set uh the the instagram i use instagram to get the promotion out there locally not even thinking that this was going to be something that would go around the world yeah <laughs> it did and then you know what happened we had the pandemic so i decided okay i'll um, open a website and put the information on there so people could try it at home. And yeah. that's when it kind of flourished and, you know, you saw all the other. Yeah. Yeah. So it's so funny that, you know, this book just came out and maybe three or four days ago, a reader messaged me on Facebook and attached a picture. I think, I don't remember if it was a Facebook or an Instagram feed of somebody else's Vando focaccia. Who, so you have copycatters out there now. <laughs> you were like that, you yeah. know, they say copying is the greatest form of flattery. Well, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. inspired a craze. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah. That's it. I I've seen a few, I've actually seen quite a few. Um, and it, it somehow, uh, inspired, a. uh, TV program, and I just got back from LA as a consultant for uh, a upcoming program that I can't really talk about, but it, <laughs> uh, yeah, so the, they'll be on TV. That's fun. So, so can you, like, is it a baking show? Is that what you mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. Does that work? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, yep, it's going to be on uh, Hulu and the Food Network, I believe. Oh my gosh, that's so yeah. exciting. <laughs> So it's great because it is kind of a fun project. Recently, I just had a mom um, message me. Uh, she wanted to have a focaccia party for her 11 year old, oh. uh, which was so great. It was so grand. She sent me all the pictures. I was like, oh my, I love it. They yeah. were just so involved with making all these little focaccias, individual ones, little ones. It was just great and such a good project for kids, really. Um, That's amazing. But, yeah. So I see. Terry, you have a uh, focaccia right there. Do you want to show that with us? Yeah. yeah, I would love to show this. 
Okay, it's, cool. Yeah, that's something I'm working on. Um, it's a uh, supposed to be a replica of uh, lilacs for spring. So we'll see. And I love that this happened. I mean, normally it would say, oh, this isn't very attractive, but if you um, are considering flavor and texture, this is going to be awesome for eating because it's just full of air. And, you know, everybody likes that kind of fluffy bread. It looks amazing. Oh, I think what we were talking about before um, we took our little our little hiatus. So um, Diane Kelly, who's a mystery writer, and I, we have an online book club. And Death Gone Awry is the book club choice this month. And so she and I thought we would get together and have a bunch of vegetables cut up and our focaccia made and try and do it ourselves and we'll see how creative we get and how it turns out but you're very inspiring oh that's really wonderful i think that you know it is i think it's a fun project that you can actually have like you know a little party around and bring friends in it, it sort of ele elevates the pizza party you know pizza, friday night pizza party kind of thing um, yeah that's true I, I, I wonder if you can cook it in a pizza oven yeah yeah. Oh, do you have a pizza oven? We do. Yeah. You could absolutely do it in there. I haven't done mine outside this year yet because it's just been this kind of weather. If you, I just want to <laughs> <laughs> rainy, really good for us, rainy springs. But um, yeah, um, you can do it in the pizza oven because it's going to require almost the same exact uh, temperature uh, for mm -hmm. baking. Pizza is a little higher, so if you are you using a stone oven. No, it's a pellet. Um, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 The pellet type. Yeah. It does um, have a stone inside. Yeah. Yeah. You can control the temperature a little bit better with the pellet stove, but um, they're um, somewhere around 450. I mean, you know, 5, 550 is for pizza, really fast cooking mm -hmm. pizza. Um, but if you just bring it back a little bit, it, you should have no problem at all. Plus, I, I kind of like the little burnt edges. I do too. Thank you. Like, yes. That's, <laughs> that's not burnt. <laughs> right, exactly. So how has this stando focaccia, you said it kind of it has exploded. So like, what is it, what's it been like? What has it done for you? Well, it's, it's actually sent me on a different trajectory than where I had um, ever ever imagined I would be going. Uh, like I said, I did the show out in LA and then um, I have a, a cookbook in the works. So that's exciting. <laughs> yeah, that's exciting. Uh, we'll see. I mean, it's, that's a lot of work. That is hands-on, so much work um, to create recipes and then do the photographs and you know make it understandable. I'm not one for me <laughs> communicating very well, in, but maybe we'll see. Well, and and I mean, bread making is not an easy thing anyway, right? I mean, no, it's really um, time consuming. But the one thing about the focaccia, I would say to anybody who wants to just try making bread, this is actually one of the easiest things to start. It's a good starting point with yeast breads because there's very little shaping that you have to do. And you can basically get the dough into its kneading shape, which I'll show you what I'm talking about. Hold on one second. Okay, okay cool. Yeah, yeah I've, I, never, I've never made focaccia, so I'm excited to try. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, once you've mixed the dough together, you're going to end up with something that looks like this. And it, it literally, it's going to basically do all the work for you. It stretches nicely. Um, it's And then you just kind of, plop it onto the pan and do the kitty kneading thing and spread it out to whatever shape you want. And you know, you're prepping your vegetables so the dough is relaxing. The one thing that you do need to remember is dough needs to relax. Don't you can never fight the dough because gluten will just keep fighting you back. If, <laughs> unless you're not using a gluten um, recipe, but for the most part, people are using gluten. Yeah. I'm going to try the gluten-free. I have a, a focaccia gluten-free recipe in a book, but I've not made it yet. I've never made focaccia. Oh, okay. So what kind of, uh, do you know what kind of flour that is that's going to be there? Um, It's a combination of rice flour and like tapioca starch, and it's like a gluten-free um, bread flour blend. Yeah. I think, yeah, there's, um, yeah, I've seen um, Bob's Red Mill makes a cup-for-cup cup version, which yeah. has 
exactly those same ingredients. You know, when I discovered, you maybe know this flower, it's um, an Italian flower, Caputo. Yeah. Right? And they have a gluten-free brand. That's what I use for our pizza dough. And it's amazing. Ah, it's yeah. that's a really good flower. That's that's uh, number one in Italy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's not cheap. So I only use it for certain things, you know, for actual bread, not for anything else. But it's so funny it's, to say that because I saw it yesterday at the store and I was like, oh, they had the double zero up there. And I was like, I should get that. It's $10. I don't know. <laughs> So, so what does double zero mean? I mean, I know it says that, but what does that actually mean? It's the purest uh, of the purest. It's um, it actually is a high gluten and it has no um, like I would say no particles from bran or anything. It's just pure flour and it, it's from a hard wheat. So it's very um, elastic, you know, it has elasticity. Mm hmm. Uh, when you, which is the gluten and so it's perfect for pizza yeah also at the same time it has a soft texture and it brings out all those big air holes i guess my thing is it's the strongest flour because it um it holds air really well so when it when you add the heat to it it puffs up it's delicious <laughs> yeah okay i don't know what they do to do a zero zero gluten free but they do it and it's darn good i must say I probably maybe arrow arrowroot or um yeah the tapioca is going to help there yeah 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 um, so what else do you have any other specialties besides the vando focaccia yeah i do i, I do a sourdough this is sourdough starter i gotta feed it it's very hungry um <laughs> <laughs> i can smell it <laughs> i do a lot of sourdough actually um and somebody just asked me if i could make some uh challah bread for the weekend it's oh yeah yeah, yeah it's a braided bread so it's, it has a lot of egg it, it's a enriched bread you know anything beyond water yeast salt and flour is called an enriched bread if you put milk or eggs or butter those mm -hmm. are enriched breads um as opposed to <laughs> lean breads lean breads are just salt yeast or sourdough and flour some type of flour okay and, well, that's interesting yeah so yeah so do you, you do you actually have a bread shop or a bakery or how um, what do you so i did i had a bread shop um i used to so what happened was i became a single mom of four boys and i was like well i really can't outside. I, have four, I have four boys too stop it <laughs> i do and i have a daughter too but i have four boys yeah well, uh, well you know you know what that's like they're like i can't be outside the house because they're chaotic and they're, <laughs> they're really little um so I ended up opening up a cottage bakery here at my house. So I have this little studio and I baked for the farmer's markets and the local grocery stores for quite a while, probably 10 years. Um, and it, that became, uh, you know, it, it, at the, when the boys were older, I was like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. yeah. So demanding to work for, um, you know, as part of the, um, financial process, it was exhausting. Um, but I can't really keep up with the demand, to be honest with you. This is, uh, you have a captive audience here where I live, uh, mm -hmm. especially in the summer. We go from 20,000 year round residents to almost 200,000 year round residents. I mean, uh, visitors. Wow. Yeah. So you can, like, it's <laughs> insane. <laughs> it's like Disney. Disney World on steroids. <laughs> yeah, that's that. That's kind of crazy. Yeah, it's a tourist area, uh, you know, in New England. So what happened? You know, people want to come and yeah. enjoy a couple of weeks. At, um, yeah, that's nice. And there's some. Um, a lot of restaurants close down in the winter time. They're not even open here, so it, it, it becomes a limited uh, kind of uh, island. <laughs> <laughs> You learn how to cook at home. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you closed the bakery, the bread shop, and now you go. Yeah. And then I, um, I started working at the hospital, which uh, I had, I had uh, been at the hospital before, and I went back to it. Um, good insurance, good benefits, you know, the whole thing, uh, part time. And I would teach bread baking because I just I couldn't get away from it. I, I, I can't. teaching gig I was like this is really great I love doing it I love 
talking to other people and being around other people and just watching them go through the process of making it, and especially people who have never made bread. Yeah. It, it's kind of an amazing, it's almost like a birth. You know, they're like, look what I made. I'm like, yeah. yeah, it's quite an accomplishment and, and that it rises, it doesn't turn out like a brick, you know, <laughs> that it rises in his area and all of that, yeah. Right, exactly. It's really fun. I mean, honestly, like you bring something to life and then of course you cook it and make it not alive. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's amazing. And I, I think that uh, when people finally realize, oh, I can do this, you know, it's like, that's like the light bulb, you know. Yes. Yeah. My character Ivy, that's kind of her because Elias Elise owns Yeast of Eden, the bread shop. And then she, Ivy becomes kind of her, you know, apprentice in a way. And so though she has those light bulb moments and develops that passion along the way throughout the series. So this is book six. Okay. So yeah, I get what you're talking about. That's very cool. Catching up to do, but I mean, do you, would you ever do audio books or no? Um, uh, yeah, these are in audio actually. Oh, you, oh, you do have them in audio. Okay. Yeah. Caught up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they are this series. And then I have, um, yeah, this, uh, book magic that takes place on the outer banks there in audio too. I have a earlier series. That's not. But, oh. Yeah. oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Wow. Well, I don't want to keep you, but I do want to thank you so much for inspiring so much in this particular book. And then also for allowing me to um, share your recipe for your Vendo focaccia, which is in the back along with your contact information. So um where so I know you're on Instagram at Vineyard Baker. Yeah. And can you be found anywhere else? Um, and on Facebook, the same Vineyard Baker. I, there seems to be a, a problem right now. I don't know what they're not connecting, but I, I do update Facebook as much as I can. You know, it's it's social media is so hard. It is. <laughs> Bring it yourself. Time consuming. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I don't want to do this. <laughs> Because it's, it does, it takes time. So you have to kind of actually plan time in the day to do social media. Yeah. Um, it just can't be on the fly. It, I, you know, if you're trying to convey a, uh, some kind of information, especially in, in recipe building or, or inspiration, you want to make sure that you're kind of, I mean, you know, very careful about how you say things or post things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, your yeah. feet is beautiful with all of your breads. I just love it. And I'm so glad that, yeah, that you created this whole thing that's become a phenomenon. And now on a TV show, I cannot wait to learn more and to get your cookbook whenever that might be. Oh yeah. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> I can be focused when I need to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I get that going, being pulled in a million directions, right? I don't know how you do it. You have five children. Yeah, but my youngest is 18 now. So oh, oh my. Oh, well, still. But they yeah. still want your attention. I mean, you know, just before this, I had to speak with my 27-year-old. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. 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 So it, it's great. I mean, I love having a big family and the kids. Yeah. So. Oh, I wouldn't trade it for anything. I mean, there was definitely some challenges, but I wouldn't trade it for anything. I love them. Yeah, same. <laughs> Same. Yeah. So you hang on one second, but we'll say goodbye. Bye, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you. Any questions, you can definitely email me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So bye, everybody. Bye.